Hello and welcome to Racing News 365.com's preview of the Spanish Grand Prix, the start of the gruelling European triple header. My name is Nick Golding and we are going to look ahead to the 10th round of the 2024 F1 season. Be sure to smash that like button before we get on with this video, subscribe to the channel and also check out the first part of our exclusive documentary with Dutch motto free rider Colin Vier. On that note, let's get on with the video. Contracted until 2035, the Spanish Grand Prix is viewed as a significant race this season due to several teams having something to prove which could determine if we have a title fight in 2024 or not. Whilst the Spanish Grand Prix is contracted until 2035, the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya is only contracted to host the race until 2026, with a new circuit in Madrid taking the reins. This weekend will mark the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya's 34th time hosting F1, and with six wins each at the circuit, Lewis Hamilton and Michael Schumacher are the most successful drivers at the track. In fact, Hamilton won the Spanish Grand Prix five years in a row, from 2017 until 2021. Ferrari has won the race 12 times, and actually, Ferrari's last win in the Spanish Grand Prix came in 2013, which just so happens to be the last time Fernando Alonso finished on the top step of the podium. Coming in at 4.657 kilometers, the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya is the eighth shortest track on the 2024 F1 calendar. The race consists of 66 laps, which sees the drivers complete 307.236 kilometers in total distance. Well, at least those who make the finish. The circuit consists of only 14 corners although only one really offers a true overtaking opportunity, which is, of course, the first corner. The start of the Spanish Grand Prix is traditionally very exciting, due to the run into Turn 1 being one of the longest of the season. The circuit consists of two DRS zones, one between the last and first corners, and the other between Turns 9 and 10. As overtaking is difficult, there is a further emphasis on an effective strategy, making it a difficult race for the strategists. Lap times are also normally very close in the Spanish Grand Prix, due to the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya having previously been the host of pre-season testing up to and including 2022. Significant private testing still takes place at the circuit. It is perhaps the venue the teams and drivers know the best, as it also hosts most European junior categories. On that note, here are five fun facts about the Spanish Grand Prix. Including the circuit to Barcelona Catalunya, five different venues have hosted the Spanish GP. The first Spanish Grand Prix as part of the F1 season took place in 1951, at the Pedralbes Street Circuit in Barcelona. The last time a female driver scored a point in F1 came in the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix, with Leila Lombardi having scored half a point after finishing sixth. Rubens Barrichello, who is best known for having driven for Braun GP and Ferrari, has the most retirements in the Spanish Grand Prix. The Brazilian driver retired from the event seven times across his F1 career, one more than 2007 world champion Kimi Raikkonen. And of course, Michael Schumacher claimed his first win for Ferrari in the 1996 Spanish Grand Prix, which is also the last Spanish GP to be impacted by heavy rain. In terms of the timetable, with F1 being back in Europe, the timetable for the Spanish GP is a welcoming one for the European audience. It is the traditional format in use this weekend, with the session times in CET being available on the screen now. For the United Kingdom, free practice one takes place at 12.30 p.m., with second practice getting underway later in the afternoon at 4 p.m. Third practice on Saturday starts at 11.30 a.m. before qualifying gets underway at 3 p.m. The race on Sunday starts at 2 p.m. The weather. Being the start of summer, it should come as no surprise that according to our weather partner We're Online, sunny skies and zero clouds are forecast for Friday, 
with the air temperature to peak at 25 degrees Celsius. It is a similar story on Saturday for qualifying, with 26 degrees Celsius to be experienced by those in attendance. However, it is all to change on race day, as for the second Grand Prix in a row, rain is forecast for Sunday. The chance of a heavy shower is very high for late morning into early afternoon, meaning there is a great chance currently of the race starting on a wet circuit which later dries. There will once again be plenty of eyes on the sky. What happened in the Spanish Grand Prix last year? Well, in last year's Spanish Grand Prix, rain did play a very, very small part in qualifying, although not enough to cause chaos. Valtteri Bottas caused a red flag in qualifying after spinning, whilst Lewis Hamilton and George Russell brushed wheels in Q2 down the start finish straight. Russell and Sergio Perez were knocked out in Q2, whilst Max Verstappen secured pole position. He was joined on the front row by Carlos Sainz. In the race, Verstappen cruised to victory by 24 seconds ahead of Hamilton, whilst Russell salvaged the podium despite having started 12th. Lando Norris's hopes of a podium were ended on the opening lap, after making contact with Hamilton, which forced the McLaren driver into the pits for repairs. Will Red Bull return to its dominant ways? That is the big question on many teams' lips ahead of this weekend, as the circuit to Barcelona Catalonia is expected to suit the RB20. In previous races, Rebel has looked wounded due to its problems riding curbs and over bumps. Being a permanent circuit, bumps won't be a problem this weekend, and riding curbs is also not crucial to a strong lap time. Several drivers fear that Red Bull will return to having its significant advantage, potentially ending speculation that McLaren and Ferrari are in a title fight with a Milton Keynes based outfit. Verstappen has a great record in Spain and claimed his first F1 victory in Barcelona back in 2016. He is looking forward to returning to Barcelona this weekend and is wearing a special helmet in recognition of his fan base. Ahead of the weekend, Verstappen said, We are back to the European races for a while now and I have been with the team at the factory this week preparing for the Spanish Grand Prix, being the first race of a busy triple header. Barcelona will be the first race where I'll be debuting my new orange helmet as a tribute to my fans and all of their support. They are actually featured on the helmet and I think the final design looks really cool in details. I have great memories from the circuit, especially winning my first Formula 1 race there. It has a good mix of high and low speed corners and we have historically driven well there, so hopefully we can maximise the performance of the car this weekend. We are aiming to keep the momentum going from Canada, so we are looking forward to racing this weekend and hopefully have some good weather. As well as Red Bull, its closest rivals all have something to prove this weekend, making the Spanish Grand Prix arguably the most important round of the season so far. With the Spanish GP being the venue Red Bull should be strong at, the reigning world champions have a chance to prove they are still the team on top. However, if McLaren and Ferrari can match them in Barcelona, then it would inform the world that a title fight is really on the cards. Ferrari in general also need to prove they have the ability to bounce back after a poor Canadian Grand Prix. A lot about Ferrari's mentality under team principal Frederic Vasseur will be discovered this weekend. As for McLaren, they have been consistently fast all season, with Lando Norris being the only driver to score a point in every race in 2024. However, it is still unknown who actually is the second best team in the pecking order between McLaren and Ferrari. This weekend is a chance for the British team to prove that they are the closest team to Red Bull. And finally, Mercedes. The Silver Arrows were exceptionally fast in Canada and were at long last back in victory contention. But was the performance genuine or was it just a fluke? A positive performance in Spain will prove that Mercedes are in fact back. 
quite clearly there is a lot to be excited for this weekend in the Spanish Grand Prix. Who do you think will come out on top? Let us know your predictions in the comment section below. Smash that like button, subscribe to the RacingNews365.com channel and check out the first part of our exclusive documentary with Dutch Motto free rider Colin Vier. From myself and everyone at RacingNews365.com, we will see you in Barcelona. See you later.